Here about Green Jordan Poole gets into it. We're here with the Warriors say today at practice. We'll see where this goes, but you had your initial thoughts, Shasky. Just another situation with Draymond Green. And how do you think this fan base is feeling about Draymond Green? I don't know. I, I think a lot of people, are, he's the heart and soul. He's the, we don't win anything without Draymond, which is totally factually correct. But you also have to, you know, parlay this forward a little, and you have to understand that, like, moving forward, Jordan Poole, you hope, will be a much bigger part of the organization, maybe not this year, but certainly next year and the year after that and the year after that. And so th there's a delicate, ba delicate balancing act here. I keep going back to the Chris Haynes thing. And the reason why I keep going back to that tweet is because that clearly came from Draymond Green's camp. Yeah. Right? Clutch management. When he was talking about the money, I'm thinking, oh, boy. The money. And it's always about the money. Anybody who doesn't think it's not about the money, you're, you're tripping. Now, let's be fair. B, I could sign a new contract yesterday, and I still want more money. You as well. Right. Every single union in America, when they sign a new deal, what is every guy in the job site saying? I'm so glad we got a raise. Boy, I could use some more money. We all want that contract extension. I don't care who right. you are. Doctor, lawyer, police right. officer, electrician, garbage man. We all want to make more money. So I think it's naive of us to not acknowledge the money. When I heard the line about him acting a little different now that the big money is coming his way, I started thinking, like, well, wait a minute. Draymond's got one year left. He's got a player option. So essentially it could be million. Two. Yep. He wants to get an extension. And right. he's looking around and he's saying, well, if Poole gets an extension and Wiggins is up for a free agent thing, Where does maybe that leave I'm me? the guy when the music stops without a chair. And so – yeah. I go back to this, and I don't know if this is a like for like comp here, but I go back to when Hunter Pence got money time, money time. Sorry, I felt that was appropriate. No, I love it. When Hunter Pence got cashed out by the Giants, I remember Pablo Sandoval was trying to get a contract and he extension. He didn't get his money, and he was pissed. And I thought that was the most underreported portion. So underreported of that two year span there. How can how could not pe how could people not see that though? I remember working at another station when that happened. And people, oh man, Hunter Pitts got his extension. And it was in a lost Giants year. They didn't make the playoffs that season. And Pablo's thinking to himself, I put in more work for this organization. I started my career in this organization. I've been loyal to this organization. And they would have used my diet against me for not paying me. And he held that grudge, oh, which is sure. why he went to the Boston Red Sox. Well, and, and this is why you hear a lot of people, it's business. It's just business. No, it's always personal. Like, that's, that's the funny thing is everyone knows it's just business. This is just a business thing. No, we're all petty. Like everything's everything's personal and petty. And you look around and you start counting that guy's money, and you yep. start thinking, well, how does that affect me? Like uh, every person does this in every job everywhere in America. So, is there an element of that? I absolutely believe there's an element of that. Now think about it. And Signy tweeted this out, and I didn't even think about it this way. Draymond Green makes about twenty six million dollars this year, and then next year his player option would be about twenty eight million dollars. If he gets the Tyler Hero deal, Jordan Poole in year one would make more than what Draymond Green would be making. Now, is it that cut and dry in terms of the animosity between the two? Yep. I don't know. But to think that the money isn't part of this, I think that's naive. Money may be part of it. Money may be part of it. Now, the other line about, you know, hey, Jordan Poole has been acting different. From everything I've been told in the last 12, 15 hours... Jordan Poole's been acting like Jordan Poole. Which is what which he's is, been doing before. Which is which is what's helped him become a fan favorite. Yeah. Jordan Poole's been acting like Jordan Poole. So what if the guy is walking around and he's talking and he's, you know, I, I want to play this from Draymond Green's podcast because a lot of people are taking this <laughs> and amplifying, amplifying what's happening There's with Jordan Poole. There's a podcast Poole. for everything. So this was when they arrived back from Tokyo and Draymond Green was discussing the three-point shootout oh. between Steph Clay and Jordan Poole. And I think it was Moses Moody who was uh, Jordan Poole's teammate. Here, here's what Draymond had to say about it. And so shout out to Steph and Clay. That was an absolutely incredible thing to watch. Like Clay said, I absolutely loved watching them humble JP. Uh, Jordan Poole, that is. That was fun. Uh, and then Jordan Poole tried to take the passive-aggressive role. Like, oh, they only the best shooters in the world, but you weren't talking like that before, JP. So that was absolutely good to see. So that was on his podcast, and I don't think there's nothing there in terms of like, hey, Jordan Poole's talking trash to the Splash Brothers for a friendly three-point shootout. Why not? You're shooting against the best in the world. You know the odds are stacked against you. Jordan Poole's cocky. You watch it, but you got to remember, he led the NBA free-throw shooting. 
he may have had more of an impact on the postseason last year than Draymond Green did. Like, if we're just talking about on the floor, how important is Jordan Poole? How important is Draymond Green? Draymond Green's important, but don't let that don't don't just look at Jordan Poole and think he's chopped liver. Well, All right, I mean, game two of the Western Conference Finals, Draymond Green was unplayable. I mean, unplayable. How about game three of the finals? Uh, the first three games of the finals, <laughs> like game two, he turned it. You know how Baldy talked about both and the yeah. Niners defense being demolition derby. Yeah. They're just running into people. Go look at Draymond Green's game two. Well, how about uh, when he got kicked out on the road against Memphis and he was like waving bye-bye to everybody? I mean, I mean nobody, look, at even the biggest Draymond Green supporter will admit there's times you're like, oh boy, Draymond. Oh, oh my God. Right. And, and I just think that moving forward, you know, I... At some point, this may not be the incident, but be at some point, they're going to say the BS is outweighing the production. And, and and I don't think we're there yet, but at some point, the calculation close? will be there. I mean, another pelt on the wall. Think about, about Green, like, you, you talk about Kevin Durant and that whole year being hijacked with the Katie and Draymond, yeah, yeah. the shenanigans. What about the locker room in 2016 when Draymond's going at Steve Kerr? This is six years later. If I say to you, Dr Dennis Rodman, what do you think of in terms of his insubordination or shenanigans? Dennis Robin? Yeah. I think of a guy who, you know, had a shelf life with every single team. It right. was a shelf life. How about Charles? How about Charles Haley? Shelf life. Right? I mean, look at the laundry list, the CBS receipt of things this guy has done. There was Draymond just Green. an article written about DeMarcus He's Cousins great. yesterday. DeMarcus Cousins is begging for another opportunity. But the shelf life of him going from team to team, wearing people thin, yelling at coaches and refs and all that stuff, now he's looking for a job. Now he's looking for a job. I, I, that's what could happen here with Draymond Green. Well, and, and this thing that I'm the guy that's got to humble people, because I see that a lot from people on the internet. Well, JP needed to be humbled. Somebody well, needs to humble this guy. What? Is, he's not some crazy rookie. He's earned his way onto the team, and he was a very – like, they don't win the championship last year without him. I think no, that's an easy statement. They don't. Both guys, Draymond and Jordan Poole. And, like, he's coming into his own. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe – his light shining a little more is putting some shade on Draymond a little. I don't know why he would think that. You're all trying to win another championship. You should all be pulling the rope in the same direction. Is that leadership, though, displayed by Draymond Green? Does, does Clay, to look, me, does Clay not, or Steph, do they humble people? No, that, that's that's not leadership to no, me. No, you empower. Punching people and getting mad over trials, that's not leadership. So we'll get to Dorian and Nick on the other side. More on this. 888-957-9570. I really want to know what the fans, because I tried to stay off of Twitter once it reported, because I wanted to hear from the roasters. <laughs> I see the YouTube the YouTube chat's blowing up. Comcast business text line is blowing up. I get see you on Twitter. Twitch. I see you on Twitch. But how are, what's Dub Nation think about this as we get ready for another season? October 18th is ring night. What the hell happened at practice yesterday? More of your phone calls. We're going to start taking the calls next segment. 888-957-9570. The roast rolls along. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises.